Brian Scudamore, uh, you're welcome to the 8020 Strategy video shows, and I want to thank you for taking out the time. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Wonderful. So, Brian, here's one thing. On one hand, I see got junk, stash your trash in a flash. Uh, you are what you don't throw. On the other hand, you move from junk to painting in a day, uh, which sounds to me like for an average person, there shouldn't be any margins anywhere. So are you a marketing maverick or are you a treasure hunter? Yeah. You know, I think it's about marketing. Really, the junk business, 1-800-GOT-JUNK, is about consolidating a very fragmented industry, a mom and pop, beat up old pickup, pickup truck. You know, anybody can get into the junk removal business, but we created a thousand trucks across Canada, the United States, and Australia, and said, listen, we can, uh, we can wow you when we haul away your junk. We're making the ordinary business of junk removal exceptional. When I looked at the painting business, what I was attracted to is that it's a very fragmented, also mom and pop business. Anyone can pick up a paintbrush and start painting their home and, and easily start a business with a couple of guys uh, and create a, a mom and pop fragmented painting business. But it takes a lot of skill and marketing ability and our 22, 22 years experience with 1-800-GOT-JUNK and franchising to get out there and then brand and create a second uh, hundred million dollar opportunity in a fragmented business. So what we plan on doing is turning the painting world upside down. We are getting out there and having uh, a, a brand, one triple eight wow one day painting that is uh, you know off to an awesome rocketing start. I first found out about the business when I had uh, a house that needed to be painted and I went and got quotes and when I had the owner of the company come in and tell me he could get it done in a day, I was skeptical. But when I came home at 6.30 at night, just after uh, my long day at work, my house was painted, floor to ceiling, all the wood, the molding, the trim, everything was done immaculately, and it was done in a day. And, and how do we make money? You mentioned, you know, it doesn't seem like something you can make money at. It costs less to paint a house in a day than it does in a week. You've got your, your entire crew there, they're focused, they're working hard. You don't have the prep and the cleanup time every single day for a week if you do it in a day. So it's been exciting for us and we're off to a great start. No, that's, that's wonderful uh, that, that you are off to a great start. Um, and my question is, the profit pools that you see are not seen by others. How come? I mean, how, how do you find profit pools in junk and... Uh, painting uh, when these businesses have been around for a very long time. Uh, what's the secret sauce here? How do you see that? I think the key is having a company where we're building a brand nationally, where we can get great PR, anything from the Oprah Winfrey Show, Wall Street Journal, New York Times. We've had awesome national press that all they're doing is talking about our brand and helping us spread uh, throughout the country. When you look at, anybody can go start a painting company or a junk removal business, but our secret sauce has been the service. The reason we called it one triple eight wow one day is we wow people. Not only are they wowed that they get the, the same quality or better done in a day, I mean that's a wow enough in itself, but they're also finding that fresh cut flowers are left at the end of the job site with a card signed by the entire crew that painted your home. It says, welcome back to your freshly painted home. We're, we're wowing people. We're leaving them with a sense that, you know, we truly do care about giving them a business experience that they want to talk about, that they want to tell their friends about, that they feel uh, wonderful about. And uh, if you can wow people in junk and you can wow people in paint, then in our situation, you can uh, attract a lot of franchise partners to this business and uh, everybody makes a lot of money. Now, Brian, you know, all of us have had experiences with uh, the so-called blue-collar workers. Um, and some of them are great people, great workers. Others are great workers, but somehow they cannot manage the business. And uh, all of us have had situations where you paid a lot of money, the job didn't get done, or you were dissatisfied. And pretty much people think that, that I, it, it's treated like a plague. I don't want to do anything of that sort. Because if I have to do it, I'll have to deal with headaches, and which is what you're alluding to. Um, 
which which comes down to the issue of the business people, the 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 people who do this kind of work for themselves, they don't see enough margins because they are not able to manage the whole process. So how come you can add the cost of marketing, advertising, operations of a large business? Where do you see scale? How how can you extract margins out of this? Is, is there is there built-in fat? What exactly are you removing here? Well, we've got in the junk removal business, it's a $100 million business for us and growing. On the uh, painting side, we believe we'll build a company that's much bigger than a $100 million business with one triple eight wow one day. And th the margins are when you start creating a national brand that somebody knows your name first to mind above all other companies in the business, you don't even need to... Uh, it's much more of a sure thing when people call you. They call you because of your credibility. They've heard your name so much in the press. They've seen your vans around. They know and trust a national household brand. It's no different than Amazon. They, you know, sell books online. They're the world's largest online book seller. They're such a, uh, a well-known, established brand that people don't look elsewhere to buy books online. People have stopped even going into retail shops to buy books online because, or to buy books because you can get an experience that's faster, easier. You can search everything in an instant online versus walking through bookshelf after bookshelf. It's a brilliant model, and, and we're doing nothing. Uh, what we're doing is nothing different than that. It's creating a marketing brand, a powerhouse brand that people know and trust, and they say, one triple eight, wow, one day, I want to be a part of that. I want to be able to paint homes in a day because why get a home painted in seven to ten days when you can get it done at the same price with equal quality in one day? We live in a society where we want things instantly. I mean, look at the fast food industry. Look at the internet business. Everything's delivered to your home directly in an instant. Uh, why is it that in the past um, the providers were not able to do it in a day? I don't think anybody's thought of it. I think that's part of the issue. And I think the other issue is assembling a, gr a group, a team of people who are coming together uh, to paint a home in a day. There's still a logistical, organizational component to get the house done in a day that requires some skill and some, some thinking and some know-how. And uh, it's not an easy feat, but when you put the right systems in place like we have done, we can teach our franchise partners to deliver that same great quality surf, uh, service uh, consistently in a day. So, so do your franchisee, uh, franchisees or franchise partners, do they, uh, uh, do they have a certain gestation period for the business where they can ramp up to the extent where you know, profitability is, is in sight? Uh, I'm sure they do, but it, it, it does it take time because obviously as a mom and pop shop, you're not able to uh, organize yourself logistically, as you said. Sometimes you may have lean times, other times you don't, and so you end up losing a lot of money and you don't have a tight crew. But when you have a tight crew and you're busy all the time, you don't have those logistical problems. So um, what is it that you bring where they don't have to deal with uh, these issues? We think if they can springboard faster with a system, with a parent company behind them, they're not in business by themselves, but they are still in business for themselves. We can help launch their business with them quicker than they could through a mom and pop type uh, setup. We give them the marketing ability. We tell them where to advertise, how often to advertise, what to spend. We tell them how to find crews. We tell them how to train them. I mean, everything is down to almost a McDonald's type system of everything is turnkey. So they can start faster, which means they can get to profitability faster. And someone really in one triple eight wow one day should be turning a profit within a year to 18 months. If they're not, something's wrong. You know, they shouldn't be in business. Uh, we give them the tools that allow them to do it quickly and then to build and scale a, a million plus dollar business in the painting industry. I mean, it's, uh, it's exciting times for us because we do find that in, uh, in, in this industry, it's so fragmented that the, the business world, the painting world, is just waiting for us to come in and completely turn things upside down and create one national brand. Now, as a serial entrepreneur, uh, you obviously have a lot of lessons and learnings and expertise that you bring to this business because uh, there's clearly a parallel between what you've done before and, and what you're doing now. So, now at least you have this expertise, but when you started Got Junk, 
how did you come to the same conclusions? Did you have the travel, travails, and you know all the uh, the issues that helped you figure out that this is how to do it? You know, we we've learned a lot over the years, and there's been a ton of lessons. I think the most valuable lesson for me was. 1994. I had a team of 11 people. I was one. I was five years into the business, and I had the wrong people. I had nine terrible employees and two that were yeah maybe so so, but one bad apple spoils the whole bunch. I fired all 11 on the spot. I brought them into a room and said, "This isn't working out. Your leader, myself, has let you down. Hasn't hired and trained the right people and spent enough time with you, and I think the relationship is beyond repair." I brought in an entire. I got rid of that team, and then step by step brought in an entirely new set of people. But I learned the lesson, the valuable lesson that day, that it's all about people, hiring the right people, training them properly, and treating them right. And I built a business with 1-800 Got Junk and 1-AAA Wow One Day Painting, where we have nothing but the right people. They share our values, our energy, our enthusiasm, our our love for building a business and for wowing customers, and. That's something that's been a valuable lesson. We've made lots of mistakes, but that's been key learning and probably the biggest learning I've had in my 22 years of, of building a brand. So you said that you know at some point in 1994 you said uh, you saw that something is not working. What led you to determining that you know the, it's the people, not the business model, or not something else? Well, I think if you don't have the right people, I realize that if you don't have people that share the same values, that have the same level of professionalism and integrity and passion for the business, then no matter what your business model is, it, it can't succeed. You need to have people that believe in the possibility of what you're building. You need to have people that want to work together, that that respect each other. And I had to get the wrong people out and get the right people in. And uh, it, it made me realize that you know if you've got the right people, I think you can accomplish anything. If you've got the wrong people, you're not going to get anywhere. And uh, I had to make a bold move and get rid of all 11 people and start again as quickly as I could. I didn't want to waste time so that I could start to build and grow a, a sizable business. Now, how long did you take to grow from those 11 people to to the next level where you say, "Well, you know what? I'm doing great. I'm doing better um, better than I expected." That was really sort of the start of the tipping point, if you will. 1994, I had four trucks going that year, and uh, 95, I had five trucks. 96, we grew to six, and then it really started to take off. And uh, in a matter of years, I mean, we we just started adding franchise upon franchise. Uh, until 2006, you know, approximately 10 years later, 12 years later, I guess it was, uh, growing to a hundred million dollar business. You know, we really scaled from about a million to a hundred million in six years, which is a short period of time. But it was, you know, when you come into our office, our head office, the junction for the junk removal side, you can see the passion and you can see the excitement in people's eyes about what we're building together. It's about finding the right people. That's the most important thing that this business, or I think any business, can ever do. And in the Wow One Day Painting side, we've got the luxury of from day one making sure we do nothing but bring on the best. So, so Brian, you figured out that you need to get the right people. Did you have help? How did you manage to identify the right people and not make the same mistakes again and again? What What's your secret formula, or what lessons did you learn? How do you implement it now? Because obviously you're scaling. Hard and fast in a world that is actually uh, rather difficult to be in. So, what's your secret about hiding hiding the right people? So, the way I look at uh, finding the right people, you know, it, it's there, there's skill behind it, but it's also trusting your gut and it's knowing a what are you looking for, what values, what character traits are you looking for, and then b trusting yourself to to make the right decisions. Uh, I think we often know when we're about to bring the wrong person on board, but it's paying attention and saying, you know what, my gut says this isn't the right person, but I'm hiring them anyways because I need somebody. You can't do that. So I often people say, well, how do you find the right people? I, I say, well, how do you pick your friends? You don't go through a checklist and uh, and look at that checklist and go, okay, I'm looking for new friends. I want people that are fun. I want people that have a good sense of humor. People that are reliable. You know, you you know what you're looking for. So same thing when you're looking for an employee, trust that you know what you're looking for and interview people over and over and over till you find those right people. Are these people that you want to spend time with? Uh, look for values 
and their, their ambition, look for their passion, look for their enthusiasm and belief in your painted picture, your vision of where you're going. Find those things first, then start to look for skill. If you then believe that you've got uh, someone who, who fits the cultural characteristics, spend time asking them about uh, their skill set. I think most businesses do it the wrong way around. They start with the skill set first and then they hope that there's a cultural fit. And that's not, the, in my mind, the right way to, do, to go about it. So have you failed uh, in making a correct assessment? And then if so, do you fire them right away like you did the 11 people? Or do you believe in training them and continuing the training? We try and give people the support. But if we realize we've made the wrong hiring decision, we're big into uh, a belief of slow to hire, quick to fire. Once we've discovered we've really made the wrong decision, we try and get those people out. And uh, I think it's important to act quickly because if you don't, you're just causing yourself more pain as a business. And uh, yeah, that, that is indeed true. So, so Brian, the other thing is the, the business model. You're replicating what you had learned uh, from your previous business. Uh, and serial entrepreneurship is very difficult to find. I mean, it's, it's hard to find entrepreneurs. It's harder to find successful entrepreneurs. And of course, much harder to find uh, serially successful entrepreneurs. So, you know, this is something you've started new. You look very positive about it. You you know that you're going to succeed. It's 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 going to take some time. W what's your time frame at saying? Well, you know, uh, now we have succeeded. I, I think we're really giving it uh, a couple of years. I mean, we'll we'll know whether or not we've really hit our targets with Wow One Day Painting. But even in the first year, we've seen success. We've got six franchise partners. We've got four months left till the end of the year when our goal is 15. We're building great momentum and it's starting to accelerate. We've got two franchise partners that are uh, about to come on board, which will take us to eight, and then seven more through our PR efforts, our networking efforts. Uh, we do really believe that uh, we're on track here and we're seeing that the businesses that are starting are, are profitable and they're, they're having a good run. I mean, they're off to a great start and it's the learnings that we've had with 1-800-GOT-JUNK that have, allow, have allowed us to start much more quickly and springboard into earlier success. And I think that's the key. As a serial entrepreneur, you've got to have a, a great second idea uh, that you can pair up with all your skills and learnings that you've had along the way. But you do have to make sure you've got the right idea. And uh, you know, I, I, I've spent years upon years looking for that second business. And uh, now I believe I found it and we're off to uh, really great, strong, early results.